around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, the United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. People today go more, take their pleasures with them. This is the lively life, the life for Pepsi-Cola. Light, bracing, clean-tasting Pepsi. So think young. Say, Pepsi, please. Take Pepsi wherever you go. So go ahead and fix a drink. But let you drink, young as you think. Yes, get the right one, the modern light one. Now it's Pepsi for those who think young. Buggy, Matt. Hey, that's a nice rig. Nice. It's a beauty. That yeah, sure is. Doc took me for a drive up the Arkansas a ways, and this buggy rides about as easy as anything else I've been. Yeah, it's okay for summer. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean for summer? Oh, you can't drive that thing around in the snow, can you, Doc? You wouldn't even get out of Dodge. And... Uh, I don't know why we stopped to talk to him at all, Kitty. <laughs> Besides, I thought you were supposed to have left town, Matt. <laughs> I'm leaving right now, Doc. Oh, where are you going? This is... Uh, Chester and I are riding over to al What for? Word came in that Kerry Post is holed up over there. Kerry Post? I never even heard of him. Well, he's a killer from the Dakota Territory. al is as far south as he's ever been. I don't know him either, Kitty. All I've got is his picture on a wanted poster. Yeah, I was in al once, man. It's a nice little town. Yeah, so I've heard. Well, at least if you've never been there, but well, nobody knows you. <laughs> you see? And you can ride in free and easy. Well, that ought to help some. It will, Kitty. A lot. Well, good luck, Matt. Thanks, Kitty. I'll see you both when I get back. I swear, Mr. Dillon, this El Cater's duster and dodge is. I can't hardly see to breathe. <laughs> you can't what? I can't do nothing to think about a glass of beer. And then let's try the saloon here. Looks like as good a place as any to get acquainted. <laughs> I don't need no persuading. Well, what do you have, gentlemen? Uh, you got some beer? Well, first we have. Uh, make it two, bartender. Okay. Uh oh. Looks like we're going to have company, Mr. Dunn. What? You fellas are strangers here, ain't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we are. That's what I thought. Uh, Grimes is my name, Cicero Grimes. Now, I ain't asking yours. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> we got nothing to hide. My name is Dillon. This is Chester Proudfoot. I do. Yeah. Welcome to El Cater, gentlemen. I'll tell you something else. You buy me a beer, and I won't ask no questions. But I'll talk to you. Providing you're honest, of course, I won't talk to no crook. <laughs> well, we're pretty honest, Grimes. Cicero will do. Okay. Uh, bartender, yeah. make that three beers, will you? Uh, I thank you, Dylan. And you too, uh, Mr. Uh, Chester. Oh, Chester. El Cater, pretty lively town, Cicero? Yeah. Twas and taint. What? Yeah, twas lively, taint no more. Oh. <laughs> well, why is that? Joe Fye, he done it. Come here two weeks ago, and there ain't been a fight since. Right. Here, three beer. Ah, oh, thank you. There you go. <sighs> Yeah, tell me about this Joe Fry, Cicero. Yeah, uh, well, oh, oh, Joe Fry, he don't bother me, Dylan. I'm a peaceful man. I don't even carry a gun. It's a wild one. Fellas like Cherry Post and such all that Joe Fry gets after. Uh, did you say Cherry Post? Take it easy, Chuck. That's all right. 
Terry Post ain't here no more. Joe Fire ran him out of town right off. He run three other fellas out, too. Oh, what for? Because he won't stand for no disorder, that's why. And they was all gunmen, too. Bad. But Terry Post, he said he'd wait till somebody shoots Joe Fire, and then he's coming back. This Joe Fire must be quite a gunman himself. Oh, my. None better. Ain't a man in the whole country to stand up to him. How's that so? Yeah, been here two weeks. Nobody's faced him yet. Oh, if nobody ain't faced him, how do you know he's such a good gunman? You find out, Chester, when you see him. It don't make no sense to me. What's his game, Cicero? Why does he want to run El Cater? Well, it's his job, Dylan. His job? Job? Sure. Joe Fye's a United States Marshal. He's a what? He's a United States Marshal. Now, what's wrong with that? Cicero, maybe you don't know it, but there's only one United States Marshal in this whole territory, and he's standing uh, right... Hold it, Chester. Over. We'll find out what's going on here soon enough. Yes, sir. Meantime, don't worry about Joe Fye. He isn't after you. No, he won't bother you none, Chester. But Dylan here, and that's different. What do you mean? Well, Dylan looks like a gunman to me. And if there's one thing Joe Fye won't stand for around here, it's a gunman. Yes, sir. He's going to run Dylan out of town first time he laid eyes on him. Buick Special sweeps Class C of mobile gas economy run, placing first and second. The Buick Specials averaged 25.09 and 24.67 miles per gallon and ran on regular gas as certified by the United States Auto Club. The Specials victory represents a clean sweep among compact cars with V8 engines and automatic transmissions, but that's not all. In the grueling 2,000-mile run from Los Angeles to Chicago in every kind of driving condition, the Buick Special proved the most savingful of all automatic shift V8 cars entered, regardless of class. Yes, with a Buick Special, you get gas savings like the smaller cars, yet more go than many full-sized cars, plus Buick styling, Buick comfort, and luxury. And you can own a Buick Special for less than you'd pay for most models of the low-price field. Take a fun run in the car that got 25.09 miles per gallon to win both first and second in Class C of this year's mobile gas economy run. The Buick Special at your dealers now. <laughs> You know, Mr. Dillon, I don't like El Cater no better than I did when we first rode in. Well, it's no San Francisco, that's for sure. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, hello? I don't believe I've seen you men in El Cater before. Yeah, we've never been here before. That's probably the reason. Staying long? Ah, uh, we uh, hadn't thought about it one way or the other. You know who I am? Marshal Fye, isn't it? I don't like gunmen here. I ain't no gunman. I was thinking more of your friend than you. You move in pretty fast, Marshal. I mean business, gentlemen. You make trouble here, I'll kill both of you. What? Many a man has died who was a little slow believing me, mister. You've killed a lot of men, huh? Everyone that's ever crossed me. How many is that? Well, I don't keep count. It don't matter. No, I don't guess it does. Say, there's a fellow looking for pleasure. Yeah, he sure is, isn't he? Now, I won't tolerate that. You're going to stop him? If I have to kill him. Oh, now, look, you can't do that. Wait a minute, Chester. They must be friends of his. They're sure shutting him up. Yeah, they told him. You see, they're pointing over here at me. The man didn't know. He hasn't been to town since I took over. He sure did calm down fast enough. There he goes, mild as milk. Yeah, you should thank those men for that. They just saved his life. It's a pretty tight town you keep, Clyde. And don't you forget it. Either of you. Good day. Well, of all the blowed up mean hog-headed men I ever did see. I don't know whether it's his being smart or everybody else around here being stupid, but it's sure working. What do you mean? He's got them all buffaloed. And he hasn't had to fight once. Did you see how he handled that cowboy? He let those other men do his work for him. And with us, he waited till he was sure that we knew about his reputation before he got tough. You mean you don't think he's a gunman at all? I don't know what he is, Chester, but I got an idea how I might find out. How? I'll show you. 
And if I can take care of Joe Fye, then all I'll have to do is sit here and wait for Kerry Post to ride back into town. <laughs> First thing I did was to go to the general store and buy an old Navy pistol and a worn-out holster and a cartridge belt. And from there, we went back to the Alamo Saloon and spent the next two hours talking to Cicero Grimes. This time, I told him who I was. And after I explained the whole deal to him a couple of times, he seemed willing to sit in. There's uh, only one thing I don't like about Marshal Dillon. What's that? Supposing you guessed it's wrong. Supposing Joe Fye is something of a gunman after all. I ain't got no bullets in my gun. Oh, don't you worry about that, Cicero. I'll be right there. Well, it still could go wrong. And if it does, I'll get shot. That's a chance you're taking to help the law, Cicero. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. Well, but you get paid for taking chances, Marshal. I don't. No, you don't. But there's one thing. You'll be a kind of a hero. Say, I will, won't I? Sure, and everybody will be buying you drinks from here on out, Cicero. Well, you'll be famous like like George Washington and all them fellas. Yeah. Say, that's getting paid kind of, ain't it? Well, sure it is. Say, Marshal, <laughs> how come you picked me for this job? There's just lots of fellas could help you out. No, no, they're not. You're the only man in town that's least expected to stand up to Joe Five. You've never even worn a gun before. I no, sure ain't. I don't believe in guns. Yeah, but don't you see, Cicero, this way we're really going to show him up. Yes, sir, I guess you're right, Marshal. And I sure hope nothing bad happens. I promise you I'll do everything I can, Cicero. But in a deal like this, something can always go wrong. I, uh, I won't try to fool you about that. You know, that's what I like about you, Marshal. You don't try to hide nothing from me. You all set, then? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I... I sure feel funny with this here gun on my hip. Well, you look fine, Cicero, even if it ain't loaded. Well, let's get going. All right, Cicero, you get out in the middle of the street now. I do. He's quite a fellow, ain't he, Miss Dillon? Yeah, he sure is. I hope I'm right about this. I'd hate to see him get hurt. Or killed. Okay, you... Get up there to that alley and do a shooting for him, Chester. Then you come on back before anybody sees you. Yes, sir. Yippee! Fly! Joe Fly! Come on out and play, Marshal. Come on! Where are you, Fly? Come on! Come on! Get out here! Come on! All right, that's enough shooting, Chester. Come on back. Joe come, Miss Dillon, right across the street. Yeah. All right, what's going on here? What's the matter with you, Cicero? There ain't nothing the matter with me, Marshal Fye. What are you doing with that gun? I take it off. You didn't know about me, did you? I'm a deadly gunman. You must be drunk talking like that. Yeah, it'd be better for you if I was drunk, but I ain't. I always do my gun fighting plumb sober. You gone crazy? I'll tell you something, Joe Fye. The reason I spend so much time in the saloon there is to forget all about the men I killed. But sometimes I can't forget. And then I put my gun on and go out and I kill me another one. Oh, Cicero ain't making you're much lying. sense, Mr. Dillon. And you're drunk and you're lying. Oh, so am I? Now you get your hand away from that gun, Cicero. I'm warning you. Yeah, I can't shoot you without pulling my gun out, can I? You're not going to shoot anybody. Especially me. Sure I am. I just told you, didn't I? I got to do it, Fry. I'm sorry for you, but I got to do it. Now, I've had enough of this. Cicero, you get your hands up before I kill you. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Stay with me. Now, I never saw a man so anxious to die. Now, you do as I say. No. No, I won't do nothing you say. You can't hurt me. You don't know it, but you can't hurt me at all. I can kill you. Yeah, go ahead. Try it. Go on. Go on, draw. Go on. Go ahead. Now, there's no man in the world can beat me, and you know it. I don't know it. I ain't never seen you shoot. Nobody has. But you're just about to see me. For the last time... You, you take your hands off that gun. Yeah, well, I, watch me, Fye. Watch me. Watch me now. Watch me. I'm just about to draw. Watch me. I'm about to draw, everybody. Go on. Shoot him, Cicero. Get it over with. Okay, I will. I will. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm no, going to do it right now. now. Don't don't pull that gun. Don't, Cicero. Now, wait a minute. I'll make it easy for you, Fye. I'll I, I, I shoot you right in the head so you won't suffer so much. No. Go right in the nose, maybe. No, not... not now, 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 don't. Now, look. Look, look, look Fye. Fye. Look, now, I, I got you covered. What? You didn't even try to draw. Don't you kill me. 
Please don't kill me. Now, now don't shoot, Cicero. Don't shoot me. I wouldn't draw on you. I, I was only fooling. Yeah, sure, you was only fooling. But you're all through fooling out, you'll fire. Please. Yeah. I'll take them guns. Give them to me. Come on out, everybody. I got look. your line team. Cicero. <laughs> hey, fellas, look here. My gun ain't even loaded, see? <laughs> You're all through, Joe Pye. Go find your horse and ride him out of town. You ain't no U.S. Marshal anyways. You've been lying the whole time. Now go on, get going. <laughs> you wait here, Chester. I want to talk to five. What not a short man, Paul. Well, you can do is take me by wind, man. Come on, Chester. Come on. Five. Wait a minute, Five. I'd like to talk to you a minute. Leave me alone. I only want to ask you a couple of questions, then you can go. Ask me what? About this U.S. Marshal business. Was that your idea? Look, all my life, I... I wanted to be a law man. Oh? Why? I don't know. Maybe so as everybody to sort of look up to me. Well, if you wanted to be a lawman, why didn't you go be one somewhere? Why did you have to come here and lie about it? Well, you don't understand. I I couldn't be a lawman, not a real one. Why not? Well, you saw what happened with Cicero Grimes. I'm a coward, mister. That's what I am. Coward. I, I always have been. I, I couldn't be a marshal, not for long. That take somebody with somebody like you, maybe you could be a marshal. Uh, maybe. But you're saying that the only reason you came here and told everybody you were the law was just a kind of a game you were playing, sort of like a kid. <laughs> like a kid. I guess you're right. I thought maybe you had some other reason for wanting to run this town. Oh, no, no, I'm I'm not a crook, Mister. I I never did anything bad. I believe you. I want to go now. I want to get out of this place. Okay. But there's just one thing. What? You go on wearing guns, and somebody's gonna kill you. Sure. I never wore a gun in my life till I came to El Cater. I... Always wanted to, but I just never dared. It was kind of fun while it lasted. Yeah. So long, Fire. So long, mister. <laughs> The profits of doom were never more wrong. There's a total of $340 billion in United States savings accounts. $10 billion a year and more is being spent on research. America's growing total national output exceeds $505 billion. Too much arithmetic to grasp? Send for the free booklet, The Promise of America, Box 1919, New York 19. Send your name and address to Box 1919, New York 19 for the free booklet. Know why a strong America can and will grow stronger still. Mr. Jones? Yeah, what, Chester? We've been here in El Cater most a week, and that carry post ain't showed up yet. How do you know he ain't gone back to Dakota Territory? Well, maybe the word about Joe Fry hasn't got to him yet. But I can't wait much longer. Yeah, morning, Marshal. It's Dylan, Cicero. Oh, I'm sorry. I just keep forgetting. All right, Sister. Oh, fat as a fall hog. You fellas are sure right. Everybody, even strangers, been doing nothing but buying me drinks and listening to my story. But don't you worry, Marshal. I mean, Dylan. I'm real careful about what I tell him. Well, you're doing fine. Say, you know something else? The bartender at the Alamo has hung that old Navy pistol I used over the bar. I guess it's kind of famous already. Well, it ought to be. It made the whole town of Elkater ashamed of itself for getting took in, so... Hey, that's what the bartender says. That's why he put it up there, to make him remember, I guess. My goodness, that fellow coming ashore raising a lot of dust. What's he in such a hurry for? Oh, why, well, that... that oh, Marshal. Yeah, I see him, Chester. What is it, Mr. Dillon? It's Carrie Post, Chester. You two stay out of the way now. Well, no, not me, I ain't. I'm going to stay here and watch yeah, this. Now, except right here, Chester. What he means is don't fall for him. 
Hello, Post. I don't know you. You've been a long time getting back to town. What are you talking about? A Joe Fye left a week ago. He had your buffalo, didn't he? Now, look here, Mr. Shut up. This may upset you some, Post, but I'm a real marshal. What? Matt Dillon from Dodge. I've been waiting for you. No. And I'm taking you back with me, Post. Lou. What for? i never even seen you before now. You're wanted for murder in Dakota Territory. And you know something else? I don't expect one bit of trouble out of you. Well, no, Marshal. I'm taking your gun, Post. Easy. Just like this. Sure, 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 Marshal. I wouldn't make no trouble. I want to take it. I got it. Now you get back on your horse. We're leaving for Dodge. Yeah. Yeah, sure, sure. I declare, Mr. Dillon, that was the easiest thing I ever seen. How'd you know he wouldn't fight? Well, it's nothing but a murderer, Chester. He's not a fighter. Well, you got him. And you got Joe Fye, too. <laughs> him pretending to be a marshal. It sure was worth it coming up here. I don't know, Chester. Joe Fye ran this town pretty well. But now the lid's off. It's too bad I couldn't have left him alone. He was doing fine. Hi, this is Dennis James to make a point about reliable, effective Kellogg's All Brands. Repeat after me, please. What do you want when you need brand? What do you want when you need brand? Reliability. Reliability. Now, what do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? What do you get in Kellogg's All Brand? Reliability. Right. You see, Kellogg's All Brand is the reliable brand that millions depend on for the effectiveness they want. It's the real Battle Creek formula that brings you more brand bulk in every serving. More of the vital brand bulk that helps you keep regular. Kellogg's All Brand is also low in calories and mighty pleasant tasting. You can trust Kellogg's for that. The crisp toasted shreds have the kind of good brand muffin flavor that most folks are partial to. So next time you're shopping, get Kellogg's All Brand and you'll get reliability. That's what you get in Kellogg's All Brand. Reliability. <laughs> Gunsmoke, produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Ralph Moody, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on gun smoke. CBS Radio newsmen reveal the world tonight, every night on the CBS Radio Network. Hurry, hurry, hurry. The last few days to see Windjammer, a sentimental thrill-packed adventure now at the Winwood Theater. Cinemiracle, the three-projector process that casts its image on a gigantic curved wall-to-wall -wall screen and puts you in the picture. Call the Winwood Theater, Whitehall 29529, for reservations to see Windjammer. You're in tune with KRLD, AM and FM Dallas, complete big-time radio. KRLD downtown temperature, 45 degrees. You'll know more, but you'll have to read less when you read the sharply edited Dallas Times-Herald, the Times-Herald has the right combination, the news, the features that sharpen your viewpoint, widen your world. And the Times-Herald brings you Sunday, the local Sunday magazine that's fast and fun to read. Get the Dallas Times-Herald. KRLD time now, 7 o'clock. Stay tuned for The World Tonight over CBS Radio. This is CBS News in Washington, Paul Niven reporting The World Tonight. 
The coming to power of Władysław Gomułka as Communist Party boss in Poland in 1956 was a bold innovation in post-war Eastern Europe. Gomułka ended some of the harsh repression of the Stalinist years, permitted a modicum of political ferment and discussion, and most importantly, perhaps, negotiated a truce with the Roman Catholic Church and its Polish prelate, Cardinal Wyszynski. In recent months, that truce has been disintegrating, and this weekend may be recorded as the time of its final collapse. In a speech yesterday, Gomulka accused the Church of deliberately seeking martyrdom and trying to provoke persecution. He implied that the Vatican was putting the Polish Catholic hierarchy in a difficult situation. Today, the Cardinal replied. In a Sunday morning sermon, Wyszynski said boldly, I tell you, Caesars, that you will bow to your God and that you will serve only him and no one else. Satan is mighty, but man will not bow his head before him. In the Congo today, there was a rare display of cooperation. And now, that story. Congolese soldiers of the communist-backed Antoine Gazenga regime today got together with UN forces for an unusual joint project. It's a military mopping-up operation against the so-called leopard men, the cannibals who have been terrorizing whites in an Arctic Kivu province. 150 UN Malayan troops and 50 of Gazenga's Congolese soldiers organized at Kindu for a 200-mile drive against the terrorists. Meanwhile, there are reports of cautious moves toward a political rapprochement between Gazenga and President Joseph Kasavubu. Secret feelers are said to have been carried by businessmen and travelers passing unobtrusively between Leopoldville and Stanleyville. From Paris tonight, a CBS News correspondent on brief leave from the Congo takes a long and rather optimistic look at the situation there. Blaine Littell reports. This reporter has spent a good part of the day staring down at the keyboard of his typewriter and hoping to complete, in 25 words or less, the sentence which begins, I think the Congo problem can be solved because... The sentence remains unfinished. Perhaps it should start, I don't think the Congo problem can be solved because... But this sentence doesn't seem to lead anywhere either, and a strong compulsion develops to give up the whole exercise to forget the Congo and spend the rest of the day strolling down the streets and boulevards of this beautiful springtime city. Perhaps this would really be the best solution, because we in the West, and perhaps those in the East too, seem to be in too great a hurry over the Congo. We want a solution. History is moving fast, we say, and history demands a conclusive end to this problem. Either that, or we say, the Congolese are incapable of solving their problems, and therefore we, meaning the United Nations, must solve their problems for them. In the short time since last July, when the Congo became independent, the Congo tried to solve its own problems and failed. And the United Nations tried to solve the Congo's problems and failed too. What this reporter would like to suggest now is that history not judge the Congo too quickly, or that if we must make a judgment, that we judge the Congo and what has happened there by Congolese standards and not our own. And by Congolese standards, things are not going so badly, not so badly at all. As a matter of fact, by Congolese standards, things are going quite well indeed. Mr. Lumumba is dead. The manner of his death shocked and convulsed the outside world. But in the Congo, his murder was accepted as normal, and his departure from the scene removed the one major roadblock to an eventual solution of the Congo's problems. Now the leaders of the Congo, or the vast majority of them, have concluded what they feel is the most successful conference they have ever conducted, the so-called summit meeting in Madagascar, at which they decided to bury, along with Mr. Lumumba, his idea of a strong centralized government for the Congo and substitute a loose confederation of states. Unworkable, we may say. Too many governments, potential anarchy, balkanization... But to the Congolese, it is the only way. Their new government is built on the solid foundations of tribal loyalties. Each leader of any importance gets his share of the Congo, his rich and big or small and impoverished piece of geography. But it is his, and it is more than he would have received under any other plan. And there you have it, the slow beginning. We may not be happy, but the Congolese are. And what is more, they have done this themselves, and now they are proud. And little by little, changes will take place. Tribalism will begin to disintegrate, and then perhaps the time will come for still another form of government. But the pace in the Congo is slow, 
and we must try to keep in step. Any attempt to set the pace ourselves, to quicken the step, would, in the opinion of this reporter, only lead back to confusion, chaos, and death. And the Congo, in its very brief history of independence, has had enough of these. This is CBS News in Paris. Another story from Paris, the arrival of a new American ambassador, covered by CBS News correspondent David Schoenbrunn. General James Gavin, hero of the U.S. paratroop drop at Bastogne in World War II, the youngest general in the U.S. Army at the time, in his mid-30s, has returned to Europe today, still young and vigorous at 50, to begin a new career and a new kind of life as ambassador to France, one of the major and most difficult diplomatic assignments in the Foreign Service of the United States. France is one of our oldest allies. It is the only major nation in the world that never fought a war, hot or cold, against the United States. That has always been on our side in every major battle that we fought, but that nevertheless is frequently in conflict with us politically. Ambassador Gavin will have to deal with President de Gaulle, a difficult man with a view...